Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Tuesday, August the 8th, 2023. Tuesday, August the 8th. Well, you know, we had um, Martin. Martin was trying to fill his brother out because Martin said, okay, Cy, I did what you, no, Cyrus, Martin came in. Cyrus says, hey, dear brother, did you do as I've asked? And he goes, look, I just have to know. You must have money somewhere else. You must have some hidden accounts. I mean, you never keep all your eggs in one basket because I still can't see why you did this. He said, my brother, I'm transparent. I'm doing God's work. And no, I don't have, my, that's all I have. And I wanted to go to, he named that foundation and blah, blah, blah. Did you do it? And Martin said, it's done. So Cyrus says, thank you so much, brother, for handling it and blah, blah, blah. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, somehow that fund, that prison fund, I think Cyrus controls it, right? Because there is no conceivable way he would just give away all his money to rehabilitate prisoners. It just, something else is behind it. And Martin's gut is telling, it's like his spidey senses are just tingling on the back of his neck, right? So he's like, well, I understand you're gonna be going back to Pentonville this afternoon. He says, yes. So he goes, brother, be safe in there, okay? Be safe in there. He says, I will be fine. I've got more of the Lord's work to do. Right. Okay. So then they had a later scene where Cyrus was being, he's handcuffed to the wheelchair and he's been taken to the elevator to be taken to Pittenville. And Austin was coming around the corner. And Cyrus is just looking at Austin. And Austin is looking at him trying to be stone-faced, but inside he's thinking, what is going on with this man? And so as Cyrus is getting into the elevator, he's being, you know, backed into the elevator, he's still looking at Austin, Cyrus straight face, and then he kind of goes. Now, wouldn't that scare you? He got this eerie kind of smile on his face to Austin as if, watch your back because I got a knife in it and you just haven't felt it turn right so Austin when the doors close he's looking like okay what in his mind he's thinking what does he know about me I can guarantee it he's thinking what does he know about me and who I work for and that's exactly what I want to know good what does he know about you and who you work for. So now I really like this scene. Tracy's being Tracy, but I can understand what Tracy means, but you know what, come on now, that forced commitment when Eddie slash Ned, Ned slash Eddie, he's not to where he needs to be committed. He just still doesn't have his memory, okay? She's telling Olivia, she wants uh, uh, Eddie to be put in, Ned to be sent to Ferncliff. So he can be helped by professionals. And Olivia's like, wait, what? And now mind you, Eddie is back in the back. You see where those plates are against the wall there? Eddie is back there. And Eddie is listening, right? So he's listening. Let's see, I think I got a point over here because the camera's opposite. And he's listening. And Olivia's like, no, Tracy, no. He is not about, um, he's not about to be committed. So she's like, well, something has to be done. So Olivia says, well, you know what? See, by law, I'm Ned's wife. I am the only one who can have him committed. And the camera is showing Ned listening to this. And she goes, and I'm not about to do that at all. She says, they can get him in that place. They could pump him full of drugs. 
They could do that electro shock. They could give him a lab. They could do anything to him. She says, and I absolutely will not have it. I won't do it. So this is a closed subject. And so Tracy said, well, you better think of something and you better do something fast then. And she storms out. So Eddie comes around that corner and he walks up to her. But be, wait, wait, before I say that exchange, everybody, before I say it, even in this picture, how many of you noticed Olivia? What have I been saying? And what did they do? Look at what that chick is dressed in. Got a little cleavage, just a little cleavage showing, right? That dress is so, woo! Go ahead, Olivia, go ahead, go ahead, Olivia. See, that's what you need to dress like. As a matter of fact, look, let's bring that dress up about six inches. <laughs> and she's going to have it going on. See, he's going to be like, woo, man. That Ned's a lucky man. He's married to you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, he says, thank you. And they're still in the kitchen at this time. Thank you for uh, stepping up for me and, and, and saying that you're not going to do what Tracy wants you to do. She goes, I would never, ever do that to you. She says, you are my husband. And he's looking, she goes, look, you may not remember. You're my husband. You are Brooklyn's father. And you're little Leo's father. And I would never, ever do that to you. And he says, no, but look, music is my soul. Music is, is everything for me. And, you know, I just want to be able to do my music and live my life. And so she goes, then I have a solution. Your daughter, Brooklyn, is a producer and a songwriter. You guys could work together. He goes, I'm a solo act. And she goes, no, I didn't say sing together. And he goes, well, doesn't she sing? She goes, she used to, but that's a long story. So she produces and she writes. She can write you some phenomenal music, some original material. And he goes, well, oh. So he goes, I have to be, you know, but he goes, she goes, and you could, you could work right here. You know, you can stay right here. You can work right here. And he goes, I need to sing before an audience. And so Olivia said, okay, you know what? You got one. Sing to me. So she sits down and he sits at the piano, Brooklyn's little rinky dink. I'm talking rinky dink, non-studio grade piano that you would give to a child. You know, seriously. He sits down and they go to another scene and they come back and he's finishing the song, of course. But his voice is a bit not Eddie Mainish. I'm really wondering, has the actor playing Ned? Because he used to sing all the time, right? Doesn't sing anymore. I think something really has happened to his voice, right? So he was rasping it kind of out at the end and he finished the song, played the final keys and Olivia stood up and she was clapping, clapping. Oh, she was cheering him on like, oh yeah, because Ned could always sing to her. She loved that about Ned, right? So as, as he plays the final tune, he's kind of like, <clears throat> he goes, I think, you know, all that singing has kind of made my voice a little hoarse. And I'm thinking, yeah, and you know, that was just one song you could barely get through, right, Eddie? So she goes, can I have something to drink? She says, sure, sure, I'll go get some iced tea. So she leaves the room and I thought, okay, he's getting ready to book. He's getting ready to book. Because for one, I think he had a little aha moment that, oh shoot, that wasn't that good, right? Hmm, I wonder what's happening. And another aha moment that this Olivia is not so bad. 
So she comes back with the iced tea and she's like, Ned, Ned. And guess who wasn't there? No Ned. So there was no Ned and boo-hoo. She's, now she knows, uh-oh, he's gone. But that doesn't mean Ned has left town. That just means he's gone. So I think I've already gone through those pictures. So let me go down to my last one. Cody has a plot or a scheme to get into Ferncliff. He has Brooklyn get put on the guest list. And he was going to have her try to like divert so he could sneak in which she does the 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 little rough nurse the one that's so mean what's her name did i even write her name down uh janice is her name janice she recognizes brooklyn as being the producer and the writer for blaze and chase oh and she loves their song and brooklyn says i have a song that's unreleased do you want to hear it she goes yeah so she puts her headphones in and she turns her back and she's you know, listening to the music, and that's when Cody sneaks in. He goes into Sasha's room. Sasha is sitting on the floor, crumbled up because she had hallucinated for one that he came and she was so happy, but yet he was told her off, yelled at her, and then he turned into Cyrus, of course, and Cyrus berated her and messed with her mind. And so when it, he finally came in, she's looking. Now we don't know; she's probably still seeing Cyrus. Or she's looking at him, remembering all the mean things he said to her in her hallucination. So he said, Sasha, it's me, Cody. I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get you out, Sasha. It's going to be okay. And he touches her and she starts screaming to heaven, right? Now, mind you, Brooklyn got her little visitor badge. Uh, the girl gave her her visit, visit, visitor badge and the orderly was taking her to Sasha's room and they could hear Sasha screaming the way there. So he, he's like trying to back up like Sasha, Sasha. And she is just yelling help, just screaming at the top of her lungs. And the orderly comes in and Brooklyn's behind him. And he goes, what are you doing in here? Get away from her. And Cody stands up and he goes to the door and he's trying to get out of there, right? And the orderly's trying to get him out of there. And I think, I don't know if the orderly, I think they showed the orderly take going out the door with Cody. Um, I don't know if he's going to take Cody all the way out because bottom line, it should be the orderly's responsibility to calm down the patient, to get her off that floor back in that bed. Yes, get Cody and Brooklyn out the room and tell Brooklyn, I'm sorry, you can't visit her today. You all need to leave. But he needs his, he should not be leaving Sasha alone in that mental state. So we'll see what, they, what what's going to happen with that tomorrow. You know, what that orderly is going to do. But he did get in and now he can see for himself that Sasha is just all the way gone and he's going to know, okay, something's not right. She's not getting better. Oh my goodness. She's even worse. Something is truly going on. So hopefully he goes to Sonny. Sonny's supposed to be what, having a watchful eye. And why has Nina not even gone back or gone to visit Sasha? She's like forgotten there, you know, my goodness. So now we have, let's go to Comic Corner, Comic Corner, because that's really, oh, no, 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 no. Before I do that, Anna makes Valentine tell the truth. Pikeman has been around for years and years, even from when Valentine was working at the WSB, when Victor was in charge of it. Pikeman has been what I think they're a contractor for the WSB, but he's like, no, they're more intertwined than you would even think with the WSB. So Anna was saying, why would you go to work for Pikeman when you know they're sh they're dangerous or shady? He goes, Pikeman took a lot of ex WSB. He goes, and we they gave us jobs. He goes, they, they I didn't do anything illegal for them. You know, so he goes, they have a lot of ex WSB agents working for them. And he goes, and I think now they even have a stronger 
connection into the WSB. So we're this is this whole Pikeman situation is going to really heat up as to who is behind Pikeman. Um, that's going to be interesting. I, I really don't have any thoughts on who that could be, but we shall see. Uh, so now let's go to comment corner. Comment corner. Cinda says, as a man, Spencer needs uh, Spencer's need for a touch may lead him to fall for Esme's charms. There's a big distance between him and Trina, but Esme is right there in the same living space. I know, too close for comfort, right? Dacia says, it's time for Gladys to go somewhere. Gladys is leaving GH. She might be killed off. Or oh, did you hear that she, the actress is leaving? I, then if she's leaving, she is going to be killed off. I hope, I hope so. She needs to be The way they've had her deliberately put Sasha in harm's way like this. That's that's just, I, I, I shake my head at that. Gladys has always been an opportunist, but I never knew she would be one to really literally put someone in harm. Sasha could be killed by this doctor. And this is all Gladys is doing. Neon Moon says, Olivia went to Paul Tuck and tried to kill Ava. Was that a dream, Neon Moon? I don't remember that storyline at all. I must be losing my mind. I think you dreamt it because none of us remembers that storyline <laughs> at all. When did Ava go to Paul Tuck? And Olivia, why would Olivia go to Paul Tuck with Ava? I mean, what, they're going to go to Paul Tuck to try to get some flowers for uh nina and sunny's wedding her and ava gonna go to get nah that I, I you may have heard that from another channel but that i don't see that happening at all no that did not happen that was not a past storyline at all sabrina says hi daily recap lady regarding Spre uh Sor serena goodness you guys have so many things Sprina, serena <sighs> trina and spencer right all, uh, the ways these characters are being written is so horrible. There is absolutely no continuity in the writing of these characters. I'm hoping Spencer is just playing Esme to get closer to her. Unfortunately, they're not writing it that way. I don't think he'll sleep with her or trust her after what she did to him and his friends. Watch, the writers are going to make him do that. Uh, but his writing, but with this writing, who knows exactly? Linda says, uh, I'm seeing the fact that Sonny wants Carly back. Sonny drops everything to get out of Nina's orbit. <laughs> I think he's remembering uh, talking to Carly about Carly, the absolute, the absolute last woman he'll be married to. And I don't, I don't quite get, get that part. Um, and that's why when he was dreaming about a blonde headed woman in Nixon Falls, the woman was Carly, yeah. Sonny was, he just didn't have his memories and he didn't know he, who he was dreaming about. So when Nina, he saw Nina, she was blonde. Nina became the substitute for Carly. Sonny and Carly's uh, love is very timeless. And I think Sonny re, uh, is regretting hurting Carly. Now, Maurice Bernard said that he is, he's tired of Sonny and Carly. So the writers went, uh, with it and behold behold nina becomes sunny's love interest uh nina shouldn't want to be second best uh but remember nina wants everything of carly's uh period and there it, you have it well maurice likes to change things up and throughout the years that's why he and sunny he and carly are on again off again they're off again now. I mean, they've been, when she first came to town, they weren't on and they weren't on, you know, so they bring them into the orbit. They take them out of the orbit. They bring them in. And right now we're out, but I can see we're getting ready to now come back in to that home space. Um, Yolanda says, one of the two nurses at Ferncliff is, Chase's real life wife. I know. I think it's the, the mean one. I think it's Janice, the blonde. I don't know which. I am says the whole town, the whole town, Sasha's 
addict, the hospital uh, didn't do, or the whole town knows Sasha's an addict. The hospital didn't do talk screening. I know they would have seen that what was in her system. And it definitely isn't what this doctor's last showing from that little medicine bag. Gladys has zero redeeming qualities. I'm shocked Mrs. Wu hasn't uh, clowned Gladys uh, from the from the drop in her stock. Um, Lashun says the blonde nurse of Fern, blonde nurse at Ferncliff. That's what I thought. Is Chase's real wife? Leanne says I love Stephen A. Oh, Stephen A. Uh, so glad he's back. Sparina storyline is so disappointing. Um, and I mean, so disappointing into it. Hopefully uh, they just break up so we so we can all move on. Well, look, you know what? In the interesting, they never truly, truly got together. And Spencer has never slept with Trina. Never. They have not done that. Done the deed. I don't think uh, Nina and Sonny will make it to their Valentine's Day wedding. If you were Olivia, if I were Olivia, I wouldn't waste my time on that. Something weird is going to happen with Valentine and Pikeman and Anna will figure it out. Now, when they set the wedding date as Valentine's Day next year, I said, oh, no, they won't even make it that long. There is no way that we're going to have to suffer. This is August, September, October, November, December, January, six, February, six more months. With Ned having amnesia and six more months of nobody knowing that Nina's the one that, that tipped the SEC, no, that way, something is going to happen this fall, period. That Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day wedding will be so far blown by then, it's not even funny. DB says, Gladys has everything. Uh, Gladys has everybody... You don't want on her scent, I know. Uh, Nina's wedding is about to be pickled with objects. At least Olivia will ensure they eat well. <laughs> Carly will be taking notes. Did they say Valentine's Day or did I hear that wrong? Um, I need the ish to hit the, fa uh, to hit the fan Labor Day. I know. See, no, no Valentine's Day. But Brick needs to be the one to give the bad news to Sonny. I am says Esme is doing, is going to post those pictures and Trina is going to go crazy when she sees them. But the funny thing is, Trina shouldn't, in realistic terms, she shouldn't see them because they're not friends on social media, right? Uh, P. Merle says, Carly has been holding it together so far. When she finds out that Olivia is planning the wedding at their hotel, Lord Jesus, <laughs> will Eddie be the entertainment? Eddie can't even think about singing, right? Um, didn't you just love Brit? Let's uh, take all, wait, let's take them all out. Yes, he sure did. Let's take them all out right now. I'm not uh, clear on Dr. M's motives about Sasha. Um, he's trying to destroy her, but they know Sasha's money won't last long with the, with a degenerate gambler. Gladys better get hers soon. Um, she's complete scum. And then, uh, Pixie says the detective <clears throat> work is horrible. Everyone knows to follow the money. I know Ron says Sonny's back and the house of cars will fall down around Nina. Karen says, Jason, Jason applied for the janitorial position in Ferncliff. That's right. Thank you for saying that. I remember him always pushing around the mop bucket <laughs> with the mop in his hand, pushing the bucket, never really mopping too much, right? <laughs> N.K. Rose says, I hope Olivia figures out, figures it out and run, ruins the wedding or Tracy finds out and blackmails Nina out of her company because it still hasn't come out that Nina was there right N.K. Rose says I think Spencer's new plan is to butter up to Esme and cause as to butter up Esme and use her 
crush on him the way she used the relationship against his dad and Ava. I don't think Spencer's thinking that far ahead. Lucy says, and my whole thing is Spencer has nothing to do all day. That's a waste of a young man's brain and or whatever talent he could have. Spencer has never developed any interests. We don't know what he likes to do, what he can do, what he can't do. Well, who is Spencer Cassidy? Let's be real. And what, what contribution is he having to society? He's not even trying to pretend like how to learn how to run Castadine Industries because they do have one. Lucy says another fabulous recap lady. Lucy also says the Devane diagram with the arrows all point at Valentine. That is so true. Anita says Cody should ask Dante to help him get in to see Sasha at Ferncliff. DB says the nurse that walked that walked away will be somebody um will be his way in well it actually was brooklyn right uh nk rose says i thought valentine was going to tell spencer his plan to take over the family business and maybe even give him an internship uh for one thing there's nobody really running elq but Valentine should take back over Castadine Industries and teach Spencer. That is really what should happen. They have a family company, a family dynasty. Only reason that Valentine went after EOQ was when Nicholas claimed he snatched it all back from Valentine. So that's it. That's it for my recap of General Hospital today. I'll be back tomorrow for another daily recap.